Ta-da! Oh my goodness gracious. She's really lovely. Get out of my way, Randy. Get out of my way. It's, it's pretty nifty. And stuff. The function is marvelous. I mean, it is very bright and happy. This boat is somewhere in between old school and current school. It may look beautiful or what? <laughs> but I'm going to take that boat to the Bahamas. This is a lot of boat. Hi there. This is Captain Q and my old sailing buddy, Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. Hey, Captain. <laughs> hey, Randy, how are you, pal? Good, how are you? I'm pretty good on a day like this. We are in one of my favorite areas of, of New England uh, called Rhode Island, and in particular, uh, Portsmouth, Rhode Island, and at the Melville uh, Boat Basin, which is the home for Hinkley Yachts and uh, the old home of the Alden Yachts. This is just, this is just extreme yacht world that we're in right now. Uh, back in 1999, uh, Hinkley actually bought uh, the whole boat yard from uh, Ted Hood and uh, they've turned it into a giant service center. But today we are on uh, one of the surviving uh, yacht builders in the world uh, called Oyster. They started out in 1973 uh, and uh, started designing some smaller boats. And then like everybody started to uh, build up and they brought on a, a man named Humphreys, uh, was the naval architect. And Humphreys is quite extraordinary in the amount of work he's done. He has done um, oh, a host of, of boats from uh, a whole series of, of uh, the quarter ton, three quarter ton, half ton, and one ton series boats that were successful uh, and raced and won in those uh, various regattas. This particular boat we're looking at today was one of the more popular models. When somebody's ready for something a little bigger and a little, a little uh, more posh, shall we say, then uh, they'll come take a look at an oyster and say, give me an oyster. Yeah. Uh, don't you have oyster on the rocks or something? Oyster on cracked ice on the half shell hey. okay you caught me on the bow here of this 2006 oyster sloop uh, she was built in Southampton England and come all the way across on her own bottom and uh, she's really lovely she weighs in about 57,000 pounds this is no lightweight and she carries around 17,000 in lead in a fin keel she's she's contemporary when she's cut away forward and you're gonna come back here uh, somewhere in about this area like so you'll see the fin starts, and this is a short fin on here. This is only a six foot, oh, a six foot and a couple of inches draft. That's pretty unusual for a boat this size. And she's not a centerboarder. She's a, a nice spade rudder with a full skeg on her. And uh, the nice thing about this boat too is it has a wonderful little entry platform on the transom, which has a, a this, well, some of them refer to as a sugar scoop. Come on on board and take a look at the, uh, see what they got on deck and see what they've got below. Hey everybody, I want to take a second uh, from talking about water-based yachts and talk a little bit about land-based yachts. Thanks to our friends at, and returning sponsors, Omaze. We're excited to be working with Amaze because we can offer you a chance to win an Airstream Caravelle 20 FB uh, along with a Ford F-150 to tow it around. Omaze is a sweepstakes-based platform that benefits uh, nonprofits, and this particular promotion will benefit the Bob Woodruff Family Foundation. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, Bob Woodruff was an ABC embedded reporter in Iraq and in 2006 was injured and has since gone on to start the Bob Woodruff Foundation. The foundation ensures that our nation's impacted veterans, service members, their families, and caregivers have access to the highest level of support and resources that they have earned for as long as they need it. Your support will help invest in best-in-class programs that will serve diverse needs of the recipients right in their communities. They complement the work of the government, ensuring that our veterans are thriving long after they return home. If you want to find out a little bit more about them, go to bobwoodrufffoundation.org. So it's a good cause, and it also enters you into a sweepstakes to win this really crazy land yacht along with the Ford F-150. The Airstream Caravelle FB, and I'm not sure, but I think the F stands for fancy. 
Uh, it has everything you need to go totally off the grid. It's got 18,000 BTUs of heating. It's got air conditioning with a 30 amp service. It's got 23 gallons of fresh water. It's got a gray water tank, a black water tank, refrigeration. It's got a Beraldi stainless steel stove with three burners, uh, much like a boat would. It's got a whole solar package. The total approximate retail value is $150,000 for the package. Go off the grid, go wherever you want to go. So for your chance to win an Airstream Caravel 20FB and Ford F-150, and support a great cause, head to omaze.com slash Captain Q and enter now. The experience closes on December 30th at 1159 PSD, so just before midnight. Thanks again to Omaze for sponsoring and helping us bring the show to you. And now back to water-based yachts. Wow. Get out of my way, Randy. Get out of my way. I'm cruising along. Come on and check this out. Uh, that, uh, that wheel seems like the right size for you. It is a nice size for me. I can get a good grip on her own, a nice elk hide cover. We've got a Brooks and Gatehouse a set of uh, uh, instruments right here, and this is going to be the all-in-one panel. There's radar on the boat. Uh, there's a whole host of uh, B&G gauges right over the companionway. Engine control switches are right here back. Nice little rocker switches uh, for you for lighting for the foredeck, compass lighting. Uh, boom lighting. This is going to have under boom lighting. I can see them right here. Those little floodlights are great because they'll light up the whole cockpit. And of course, there are spreader lights. Those are great big floodlights uh, on either spreader right up the up the mast. You can see them on the on the first set of spreaders there. Electric winches. Why not on a yacht this beautiful? Uh, and you've got uh, one for the staysail and for the Yankee. There's probably cushions stored in here somewhere. I haven't seen them yet. But when you're seated down here, you are. Uh, you know, pretty cozy. And the cockpit seats are nice and long. If you notice though, uh, we don't even have a question here. We have no hatches at all, do we? No. So stuff's happening below deck here. They've got a little step arrangement down between the winches. On your engine controls, we've got autopilot sound. It looks like a uh, Raymarine 7000 auto helm. And of course, a bow thruster right here. The uh, controls for your uh, main sheet traveler I have two separate winches here. You're gonna to have to step out of the cockpit to probably get to those carefully and to haul on those. But the rest of it's very practical. Nice awning to keep the cancer away. <laughs> and what they have done too, which I always appreciate, is put a nice big window here so you can see your sail. Beautiful cocktail table with the fold up leaves. And we've seen a couple of refrigerators recently, haven't we? Oh boy. Oh, the, <laughs> the, look how, look how, uh, much beer you can put in there. I've seen a couple of these on boats right now, these little stern seats. It's like being in the back of a uh, uh, 32 Ford in the, in the rumble seat, right? Oh yeah. And it's, it's gotta be spectacular watching watching the uh, waves roll by back here, being yeah, safe. Yeah, we just, we just saw them on that Irwin 44. There. High and dry, we did, yeah. Maybe you're coming around and you like these. And I think I am. We got a massive dome here. What are we gonna do with this dome? You tell me, you're that the electronic dome. guy. Yeah, I know this. It's uh, Viasat's uh, internet satellite high high speed bandwidth. At, uh, and will that, uh, will I be able to watch Netflix and the Samoa <laughs> Islands or whatever. You'll be able to do all that from anywhere, any spot in the world. We have a giant solar uh, array up here, and I'm going to guess that's probably what, uh, at least 600 watts. Maybe. And they're sitting on a, a massive uh, Simpson set of davits here. Uh, these are really lovely, and they're electric. We've got little electric controls down here. I do like this wooden ladder down here a lot. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. And I bet you somewhere down there, up behind that door, I know. There's a hot and cold shower. I'm gonna sit down again. I can I can make dinner for you, can't I? You're gonna grow me something, yeah. Uh, chili dogs. <laughs> <laughs> or something more elaborate. How about this orange cattail here? Uh, this thing? Yeah. Well, these this is a good old standard type, and I like this a lot. A lot of people are using a different version. I'll explain that in a minute. But what happens here, you go over the side, you're gonna pick this up and just throw this over the side and this is heavily weighted down here. So this will float in the water about this level. And notice on top, in this case, there's a very tired flag. <laughs> Further safety, this is the man overboard uh, system, and it shows you what to do. We have a hydraulic backstay, and this is a really tall mast going up here. Uh, and I'm surprised they don't have a remote hydraulic system, but we're not gonna really be racing this boat. So once in a while, Captain's going to come out and say, okay, it's blowing X number of, uh, of knots, and I'm going to pump up the backstay. 
and it'll tell you how much pressure you have in here. In this case, right now, it's showing about 100 pounds. And I when don't do you know, crank up the backstay? When your when your headstay starts to sag off to leeward, uh, and you're going to want to harden that up a little bit, especially in lighter air. Uh, and it's just a matter of getting the right sail set. Uh, so this is your puppy. You also want to make certain that the mast stays in column and you don't want the mast being pulled forward too much. So this is going to keep the top of the mast pulled back and then you've got a set of uh, lower runners that will steady the midsection of the mast and there's also a baby stay we'll see in a minute in front of the mast so that's triangulated. That ranks right up there with super tidy, huh? This boat comes complete with its own fishing uh, table. We haven't established exactly where that sits but it's also nice too because you, you, you can't let somebody lie to you about the length of the fish. This is very important. We've got the uh, uh, life raft. Now this is, we've seen life rafts that are in canisters, you know, plastic cases. Uh, I would probably clean up all these lines and figure out another place to put all the small stuff. I'm cleaning this out to show you, you want to have it cleared out so you can get this because boats can go down slow and then go down fast. You don't want any problem. You want to be able to grab these handles and pull this thing right out. We got another locker and you know what's going to be under here. What do you think? Oh, propane? Okay, yep. Really? Well, that was great. Thank you very much, I guess. Two good sized propane tanks. Do you, you like go. that for being waterproofed there? Well, it's, it's, it's splash proofed, but uh, we do have seen moisture under there. Actually, you know something, Randy? Is there a little oh, scupper for there, that? Here, here's a... This is a bit of a scupper here, and it has... Oh, see. right in front of you. Uh, very front you and center. see a drain? Yeah, it's clogged. There we go, okay. So you want to unclog that. just need a little coat hanger to send down there. Oh. Oh. Yeah, those hydraulics do work. So, Randy, you know what this is? That. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Here you go. You're ah. going to stand on that behind the wheel. There you go. This is the garage, and... It's packed solid. I don't know what all else is down here, but they do have a nice rigid portable vacuum cleaner. And that's always nice to have on board. You like a vacuum cleaner on a boat, sure don't do. you? Sure do, yeah, I've got portable. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're gonna get recommended to more people, and so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing, so every little bit helps. Thanks again. Yeah. Sorry, pal, but I don't have a uh, I don't have a bowsprit for you up here, okay? Yeah. So we're gonna have to just deal with, you know, we could probably put a little board across here maybe. Would you like that? I could sneak in front of that, yeah. Right, right on top of this uh, rock now, whatever this, this giant uh, uh, kedge anchor is. That's, that's pretty, pretty heavy duty, isn't it? Yeah. And I can tell that's been underwater too. That's been used. Um, now, what do we notice here that's a little different than, than the usual? Well, it's not a drum and there's some hydraulic lines coming out of here. These are very solid. Yep, yep, you've got it. The hydraulic driven Furlex right here by uh, Reckman, I think the name is. As you pointed out, this is a little larger than the stays that we're used to seeing, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it relatively speaking, it goes about the same two thirds of the way up the mast. Yep. Uh, and I think you could probably do a lot of sailing with just this staysail and uh, a little bit of the main stretched out on the boom. These handles they have are really nice. They're flush and so forth. You just got to figure out which way to open them. Uh, a spare Danforth living down in there, and a lot of, a lot of uh, one inch uh, line those. Randy, a boat like this needs ventilation below decks, right? Yeah. And uh, there's no shortage of it. Is this bad? This is amazing. Uh, so you have four sets of, of wind scoops and derades. You have two uh, hatches and uh, right in front of the mast, and a major one here. Now, you know what else opens up on this boat? Uh, no. The whole front of the saloon, right here. I'm always a little apprehensive about giant windows in any sailboat. I do know about a, uh, a boat, and I read an article about a fellow went down uh, offshore heading uh, toward the islands. Water hit these windows and broke through them. These, I bet, are probably pretty close to bulletproof, uh, but on that particular boat, he ended up sinking pretty quickly. Up. Side windows of the saloon are just a little quirky, too quirky for me. We have an in-mass furling system. See how the gooseneck here, which is this fitting, yep. 
is bolted steady. This doesn't move at all, does it? No. On the older boats, uh, you would always get on, you'd find a track under here. And this whole gooseneck was allowed to slide up and down. And the reason for that is from a racing standpoint, they would put a band down here and there'd be a band at the top of the mast. And that gave you a range of the length of the luff of your mainsail on there. Interestingly enough, they've got a solid vang with just this uh, tackle line that goes back to a winch underneath the dodger. So that's how you're gonna control it. Um, interesting how does, enough- How does that work? Because you're not tensioning a solid pole. No, this, this is spring-loaded. Oh, okay. Oh, I see here. Yeah, there's a little gap. But interestingly enough though, on a boat this size, that the backstay and this one weren't set up with uh, hydraulic. Let's take a look at this uh, spinnaker pole they have here. <laughs> this is pretty large. You'll take the load off of it and unclip it down here. Okay, this is just hanged in here. And then there, you'll have a, uh, a topping lift line attached. Where's the attachment? Right through this hole, right this hole here? Yeah. That'll go through a topping lift, one of these lines like this. And then somebody will hold up in the halyard and you'll gently walk that forward. And it will slide down on the spinnaker pole track right behind it. Self-tailing winches on both sides, and these are uh, Lumars, I guess. But you know what? The sun's set about to set. We should head below. Ooh, that sounds good. Uh, appetizers. Ooh. Cocktails. O oysters. Randy, once again, I invite you into our latest discovery. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what do you think about this? Wow, this is... Uh, take a little pan around. Just start from there and, 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 and take a look at the saloon window lighting coming in here. It's kind of bright and happy. It is very bright and happy. Now, I'm sitting in this wonderful, uh, I don't know, semicircular settee. I don't know that this converts into berths, but you could probably sleep alongside the, uh, the back here. Interesting wood. This is, uh, what do we call it? You're a wood guy, right? Uh, beech or birch. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very light and fair. This boat was built in, uh, in England and the carpentry work and so forth is very straight, very, very nice. Uh, it's different than uh, some other boats and different styles than the older, um, older, more traditional style boats. This boat is somewhere in between old school and current school. And it's really pretty nice and really comfortable. I'd be happy going for a cruise in this boat. Look up at this one forward that we cracked open earlier. Can you feel the breeze coming through there right yeah, now? Yeah, it's really lovely. It's really spectacular. So uh, we, we have storage galore. We won't look at all the storage again because it's just, you can see the length of cabinetry down the whole side of the boat. And that's almost 30 feet of cabinetry work. Look at that, almost six inches of, of foam on here, right? And I believe this is, well, it's, it's uh, not, I don't, it could be Naga Beast. No, I think this is leather. A big TV over on the other side, and I'm sorry to see the TV on the boat at all, but uh, the reality is we like the TV because we need to keep up on Captain Q. If you're opening this, I was gonna find a, a washing machine, but I've, and I'm gonna bet you that maybe that was considered at one point. Maybe that was an option or something? It could be, yeah. but uh, this locker is a really nice glassware setup, so uh, this is gonna be your bar working counter. One other thing we're looking at now, too, are the little windows for watching dolphins, right? Sure. And they're very nice. They're down in the hall, but you know what they do? Oh, they open. They open. And are we always going to remember to close <laughs> all those opening hall windows? Not I know. every crew person remembers that. I'm moving our way around this really large space to the nav station, which uh, gets kudos here. Uh, I've got to bend to get in there. Uh, this is very tight, and I'm not going to get rolled around in here. My knees are locked up underneath the, the, uh, the table itself. It has a, a leather top to it. That's pretty deluxe, isn't it? Brooks and Gatehouse repeaters, uh, and uh, your radar unit, single sideband VHF, portable handheld. Um, it's also tidy. It's, but we haven't looked in the, <laughs> haven't looked in here, have we'll we? We'll see. Okay, we'll take a chance. Oh! There we go. And that has a nice lockup feature. Um, this is tidy. They've simply taken these off so that we could see the instrument. So I can't disregard that. I'm, this is a, definitely a neutral, neutral, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yep. Um, and here's another feature that comes with this boat. And this is the Oyster, um, this is the Oyster, well, Double Queen's Ward Builders, um, maintenance log. We have uh, a wonderful 
oh, electrical panels here. Here's your um, uh, generator hookup. I think I can get to find out what the power is on each line in here. Uh, you've got an inverter switch versus the shore, gen uh, shore generator. It's a little gauge right in the center. Fuel water uh, filter water separation. That's a rate core gauge and that's going to tell you that's going to light up if it's going to sense water in your rate core filters. Oh. There's lots of stuff and oh I just grabbed for this. We like that handle right there. I can get out of there. Boat's moving. We've got grips up on along underneath the windows. Not so many overhead. You're going to have to move sort of sideways here but there's one long one dead center uh, to take care of uh, you getting across the boat. And one here. You know, one thing I'm thinking about right now is uh, underneath here. I know you have a question about that, and I'm going to tell you something. Um, we know somebody else. Yeah, we so we met our friend James on uh, sailing Zingaro right this year. And what do you know about that story? Well, he was telling us that he had a through hole slash uh, hose break break loose, and he started taking on water like crazy. And he has an Oyster 485, uh -huh. so similar design. Uh, and he said that his, the water started kind of coming up above his batteries in the bilge. We've never thought that it was appropriate to put batteries down in the bilge, just for that sort of problem. And uh, they keep doing it. And as long as you keep the water out of the boat, it doesn't matter where you put the batteries. I'll show you under here what, uh, what this looks like on this boat. Now, okay, they've encased the batteries in uh, fiberglass tanks right here and this is the cover we see this is actually living in its own fiberglass bin and that's really about as close to uh, the best thing you can do so this bank right here we presume probably is involved for the generator and uh, thruster this bank right here see now we're getting into serious serious stuff there you see yeah the lifepo batteries um those are 100 amp hour uh, battery packs right there. So there's 300 amp hours here. This is nice. This is what I would gonna call the crew or the, or the captain's cabin on a boat like this, or just one extra guest. You got a kind of a cool uh, bunk up high here, complete with his own window. Storage every place in this event. I don't know if you can see behind me here. Here's your air conditioning and heater vent up here. So this is gonna be very pleasant living. Now, I think this is the captain's cabin on here because there's sort of a lot of utilitarian items in this closet here. I thought this was going to be a hanging locker, right? With ball gowns? No. It is, uh, he's ready to do all the little touch-up work on the boat that's necessary. And uh, I guess they pay him enough so he can have a little extra food supply here too, can't he? Yeah. Let's take a look at this area here. That's snug. That's pretty nice. What do you think about that for an engine room? That is a nice uh, almost walk-in, right? It's certainly a walk-in. Almost you could sit down on top of the, uh, is that the generator down there? Yep, you got your the, generator. The generator. Got some oil filters. Nice it's a fire. Yanmar 100 and, uh, 100, 110 horsepower, I believe. Actually access it from the other side too. Those panels will open up. That's this little gizmo up here, this is something new for us. That's a... Uh, That's uh, and a water few, separator. It's a cooling system raw water that gets flushed out of the back end of the boat. You know, Usually we see that in kind of a, um, a black tank uh, yeah, clamshell like, type of a, a thing. Like that. There's Something some... like that, but they seem to be connected. Uh, let's go down and take a look at the galley here. This is pretty nice. Again, we have step downs here, and many step downs we step down and whack, we get hit, right? Well, we're, we way miss that here. Oh! This is, I like that warning heavy lid. Look at the, th the depth on that. And you need that depth for insulation. Four burner propane stove and oven. Uh, storage outside. The cook gets his own fresh air down below, but he's got to remember to crack his port <laughs> gotta close that one. Did I? There's your coffee maker and your hot water maker heater. Uh, double sinks, nice car. I like this in the center too, because we like it close to the center line, don't we? A wave on this side. Uh, and again, we like that. Little storage is everywhere. We found a little more places to chill out. All right. Nice front loader. Look at that. And a nice yeah. height, too. Which is the freezer? Which is the icebox? I'm going to say this is probably the icebox, and that's going to be a deep freezer over there. Yeah. Most likely. Storage over, over top side. 
uh, over top. This this is nice. Uh, when you find little uh, little yeah. items like that, look at that. Okay, Rende. Uh, this is where the king and queen are supposed to reside. We always notice something, don't we? Yeah. What is that? Uh, probably space on either side to get in or out. Well, no, that's good. I, you can make the bed pretty well on this. And it, well, I've complained about that on the boats where they put these in. See, I could get in here and pull that sheet down there and tuck it in and so forth. Uh, but uh, what else am I missing? I just gave you a hint. Do, 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 I got do, nothing. Do, do. Oh, dumb No chairs. No. You like that handhold? I do. I like handholds everywhere. They're really good on their handholds for things you want to do. Uh, this is a queen size bed, no doubt. Ah. Uh, uh, is that okay? Very nice. Okay. Anyway, that's that's a sign that we're headed for the head, and we have our own shower stall in here. And there's no curtain or anything, but we do have oh. that. How do you like that? Beam you up, Scotty. Nice uh, Corian uh, countertops here for the sink. Tilted mirror. They're all doing this. Opening ports. We have an electric flush head here. And that's nice. And it's set fore and aft, which we like. Slightly canted even. So very nice head. Plenty of, I've got 6-3 headroom in here. Okay, Randy. This is a lot of boat. Yeah. We got more more places to go. Heading forward. One door number two, door number three. What do you want first? Oh, uh, let's take this one to port. Okay, that's door number one. There you go. Upper and lower bunks, and they're they're super wide. Tons of little dry cabinets. We open all these cabinets, and they're always dry already. There is uh, air conditioning, heating in this cabinet, and we've got hanging lockers here. Uh, door number two. Okay. Ah, does this look familiar? It does. Just like the one in the back room right there, right? Yeah, the master. Fore and aft head, uh, flush here down for you, Tank, canted mirror, and we're down to door number three. You want to try that? Sure. Here we go. Ta-da! Oh my goodness gracious. I have a question now. Wow. I have a question. Which is the master? Which is the master? Uh, I think this but one. I, well, you know, Except for it doesn't have the ensuite head, does it? It's kind so of it's close ensuite. Uh, near ensuite, we might call that. Uh, no, this is definitely a little, slightly smaller space, but only by inches. There's a, they have their own, um, uh, they have their own television here. They've got a really nice tall hanging locker with a mirror that's got, see, you fit in that mirror, don't you? Look at the size of the hatch over this one. This is it, Randy. Uh-oh. This is the easiest four peak I've ever had to get into. I look beautiful or what? <laughs> <laughs> but we got a little padded on the on the side here. Not a lot of fancy woodwork out in the hall. A lot of fabric uh, for the overheads and so forth. It's very practical, easy to clean, um, and it is light. It brings light in here. Now the clouds are darkening over outside. I think that means uh, that with the clouds overhead, you're just feeling a little snoozy. That's Randy, it. you're out. Go, go do something else for a while. All right. Take care, buddy. Good night. got a chance to take a look at an oyster which we didn't think we'd we'd see in our in our lineup for some time and we were very pleasantly surprised weren't we yeah uh, it was it was pretty perfect and the, the boat to take to the islands with a shoal draft the the uh, saloon with light and windows and air that I think it's time we want to talk about a rating on this boat. We were sitting on it in the water. It floated nicely. It didn't even move, did it? Yeah, no. I and we're going to give her uh, 15 points, take it right up to 25 for being a uh, an interim design, as I mentioned, below decks. So she's a handsome boat. I'm, I'm going to give her another 15 on top of that. We're up to 40 easily. Oh, the 40 just seems so low for that boat that was so nice. And I'm going to take that boat to the Bahamas next week if I could. And I'm going to give it 15 more points. We're going to 55 on that boat. Wow. Yeah. A wonderful boat. And... Uh, uh, it's going to be a wicked fast boat, too. So if you want to sit for today from uh, the beautiful state of Rhode Island and the beautiful waters of Narragansett Bay, surrounded by wonderful yachts, we thank you for watching.
If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>